chemical reactions, turning elements into compounds and back again since 13.7 billion years ago. What is a chemical reaction? Well, here's an example. We have two sodiums and a diatomic chlorine forming two sodium chlorides. The stuff that you react is called, oddly enough, uh, reactants. The stuff you form, we call those the products. Now, what a chemical reaction is, is a recipe for how to turn substances into different substances. And it tells you what substances react together, that's the reactants. Uh, it tells you what substances are made, those are the products, and the proportion by moles of products to reactants. And we use coefficients to determine that. And as you see here, we have coefficients. Now, notice here I don't have this highlighted. This is actually a coefficient of 1 here. If there's a coefficient of 1, then it's just simply not written. Just like there's one sodium, I don't make it Na1, I just call it Na. So there's one mole of diatomic chlorine and two moles of solid sodium as reactants, and they form two moles of solid sodium chloride. How do you balance reactions? Well, first of all, keep in mind the law of conservation of mass, which says that you can't create mass and you can't destroy it, at least not by physical or chemical change. Now, of course, that doesn't say anything about nuclear change, so we're not even going to mention it. Oh, too late. Uh, anyway, to balance reactions, the first thing you need to keep in mind is you need to use a pencil because of a rule that's going to come a little bit later. Use only coefficients. Never, ever change a formula to balance it. In other words, if you change a formula, you have done it wrong. Balance only one element or polyatomic ion at a time. When you're balancing one element, completely ignore all of the others. Revise if necessary, hence the first rule, use a pencil. Sometimes by balancing one thing, you throw something else off, and so using a pencil will help you to make any corrections you need to make. And of course, balancing reactions is really easy to double check your work when you're done. All you have to do is go back and take a look. Hey, do I have the same amount of stuff on both sides? So here's an example. Diatomic hydrogen and diatomic oxygen form molecular H2O. You'll notice that we have two hydrogens on the left side and two hydrogens on the right side. So as far as we're concerned right now, hydrogen is balanced. But look at the oxygen. We have two oxygens on the left and only one on the right. So to balance it, we put in a coefficient here of two. Now we have two oxygens on the right and two oxygens on the left. Oh, but wait, that throws off the hydrogen, because we still only have two hydrogen on the left, but now we have two times two is four hydrogen on the right. Well, that's easy. What times two is four? Aha, two. So now we can just double check it. We have four hydrogens, four hydrogens, two oxygens, two oxygens. It's now completely balanced. So, for example, we we'll throw that one in there. Uh, here's our di two diatomic hydrogens and our one diatomic oxygen, and we react them together. The bonds break, the atoms rearrange, and two molecules of H2O are formed. Second example, potassium and diatomic bromine form potassium bromide. Well, what ends up happening in this case is we've got one potassium on the left and one potassium on the right. So far, that looks good. Two bromines on the left, one bromine on the right. Uh-oh, that's not good. So we've got to put a two in front here to balance that out. But of course, that messes up the potassium. So we'll go back and revise the potassium and put a two in there. So there's two potassiums on the left. There's two potassiums on the right. There's two bromines on the left and two bromines on the right. So we have two atoms of potassium on the left. We have a molecule of diatomic bromine on the right. And the bonds break, the atoms rearrange, and we end up with two formula units of potassium bromide. Next example, aluminum and oxygen form aluminum oxide. Now we have one aluminum on the left, we have two aluminums on the right, so we go over here and we pop a two in there. We have two oxygens on the left, we have three oxygens on the right. Well, when you're faced with a situation like this, the best thing you can do is just multiply the two numbers together, two times three, it's kind of like finding the lowest common denominator. Two times three is six. That means when we're done balancing, we're going to have six oxygens on both sides. What times two is six? Three. What times three is six? Two. Now we have six oxygens on the left and six oxygens on the right. But of course, that messes up the aluminum. We have two times two is four aluminum on the left. 
We have only got two over here, so let's go change that to a four. Next example, zinc plus hydrochloric acid forms zinc chloride and diatomic hydrogen. So we have one zinc on the left, we have one zinc on the right, that looks copacetic. We have one H on the left, we have two H's on the right. So let's go over here and pop a two in that place, so there's two H's on both sides. We have two chlorines on the left, because putting a two in front goes for both the H and the CL. We have two CLs on the left, we have two CLs on the right, well isn't that convenient. So let's go back and double check. One zinc on the left, one zinc on the right, two H's on the left, two H's on the right, two chlorines on the left, two chlorines on the right, and therefore we end up with a scenario like this. We have the one zinc, and we have the two HCLs, the bonds break, the atoms rearrange, hey, one zinc chloride and diatomic hydrogen. In this next example, we have iron and calcium nitrate forming iron three nitrate and calcium. We have one iron on the left, we have one iron on the right. We have one calcium on the left, we have one calcium on the right. But we have a different number of nitrates. Oh no, whatever shall we do? Well again, like this uh, example in the last time, we're going to take 2 times 3 to get a lowest common denominator. 2 times 3 is 6. So let's see, 2 times what is 6? Oh yeah, we'll pop a 3 in there. Now we've got 3 times 2 is 6 nitrates on this side. See, we balance the whole nitrate. We're not going to balance the nitrogen and oxygen separately because it's there on both sides. So we can just balance it as one piece. And over here we have 3 nitrates. 3 times what is 6? 2! So again, we have 3 times 2 is 6 nitrates. 2 times 3 is 6 nitrates. Hey, everything balances out for nitrate. But look what it did to calcium and iron. So what we're going to have to do is balance the calcium out by putting a 3 over here. And guess what goes over here? Oh yeah, that's right. We're going to pop a 2 over here. So let's just double check. 2 irons, 2 irons, 3 calciums, 3 calciums. 3 times 2 is 6 nitrates. 2 times 3 is 6 nitrates. Everything is good to go. Next example, carbon dioxide forms carbon monoxide plus oxygen. Well, this is kind of a weird one because here oxygen is split between two different compounds. And it doesn't work out very nicely because we have an even number of oxygens over here and an odd number of oxygens over here. But here's a really neat thing you can do. It's easy to balance even number with even number. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it so that there's an even number of oxygens on this side. How do we do that? Take the odd number and double it. If we put a 2 in front here, look what that does. We have 2 plus 2 is 4 oxygens. And that's going to be really easy to balance. We have 2 oxygens here. We pop a 2 in front. Now we have 4 oxygens on this side and 4 oxygens on this side. Oh, and look! We have 2 carbons and 2 carbons. That was really convenient. Now, if you're still not getting it, go back and replay this over and over again until you can figure it out. And this might help a little bit. This little diagram right here. We have two carbon dioxides. The old bonds break. Check it out. And the new bonds form. Isn't that neat and spiffy the way it kind of spins around like that? So again, we have CO2, CO2s. They break apart to form two COs over here and one diatomic oxygen over here. In this reaction, we have sodium chloride plus lead 2 nitrate forms sodium nitrate plus lead 2 chloride. Now, here's an interesting thing. It doesn't matter actually where we start balancing it. We could start balancing anywhere. So for fun, hey, let's balance the nitrate first. Yeehaw! So we've got two nitrates on this side, and we have one nitrate on this side. Yes, I know, I hear you screaming, hey, but there's a three over here. Doesn't that mean there's three of them? Well, no, you see, because nitrate is defined as being NO3. It's a nitrogen and three oxygens that are co coordinate covalent bonded together in such a way to have an excess charge of minus one. Anyway, so if you want to have more than one of a polyatomic ion, you throw parentheses around it, then you throw the number outside of it. If there is no parentheses, that means there's only one of that ion. So we have two nitrates on this side and only one nitrate on this side, so we pop a two in front there. All right, now of course that means that there's two sodiums over here, so now I'm gonna go over here and pop two sodiums in front. We have two chlorines. Hey, we already have two chlorines over here. We have one lead, we have one lead. Hey, this is pretty cool. Two sodiums, two sodiums. Two chlorines, two chlorines. One lead, uh, one lead, two nitrates, two nitrates. Everything is balanced. Isn't that pretty? 
And our last example looks un unbelievably obnoxious, but believe me, it's actually not that hard. Actually, don't believe me, just keep watching and then you'll see. We have three calciums on the left side, we only have one calcium on the right side. That's easily rectified by putting a three in front. We have two phosphates on the left side. We have one phosphate, yes, I know, KPO4, right? There's no parentheses, there's only one phosphate over here. So we have two phosphates on this side, only one phosphate on this side, so we pop a two in front to balance the phosphate. We have two aluminums on this side, and hey, by putting a two in front, we also have two aluminums on this side. How convenient. And then we have three sulfates on this side, but we've already taken care of that by putting a three in front, so now we have three sulfates on this side. Wow, it looked like a pain in the butt to balance, but it's actually unbelievably easy to balance this reaction. Just stay focused. And that is how to balance chemical reactions. Now go ahead and try a bunch on your own.